do you pick your perfect holiday destination? For me, I like really friendly people, pristine beaches, but most of all, I need absolutely fantastic weather. You may know from your early geography lessons that the Earth gets its seasons from its axial tilt. Because of this, for half the year, the northern hemisphere of the Earth is tilted towards the sun, and for the other half the year, it's the southern hemisphere. So, June to August should give the entire northern hemisphere a nice warm summer, right? Yeah, not exactly, because actually the Earth is only tilted by a small amount. It's currently about 23.4 degrees, and that means during the day, the equator is always facing the sun and always getting the brunt of those rays. The further north or south you go from the equator, the more spread out the sun's rays get, and the less heat is transferred, so the less warm it will be. There are therefore significant variations between latitudes. But this doesn't account for variations in climate between places on the same latitude, such as La Paz and Brasilia. One of the biggest differences between the two is in their altitude. La Paz is the world's highest altitude capital city, and it's over 2.5 kilometers higher up than Brasilia, which is in the neighboring Brazil. And the thing about heat is, the higher up you go, the colder it gets. But why is this? Well, as we go up, the atmosphere becomes less dense. That means it's less good at trapping in the Earth's radiated heat. At ground level, it's a bit denser, so the heat gets trapped. Higher up, it's released out into space, and therefore it's colder. But there's more! Let's take Alice Springs in Australia and Sao Paulo in Brazil. Same hemisphere, same latitude, same altitude, but this is what they look like. Proximity to big bodies of water also plays a significant role in climate. This is because water heats up and cools down much more slowly than land. Therefore, any area that's close enough to a large enough body of water will experience less extremes in weather, particularly in relation to temperature and rainfall due to sea and land breezes. However, the effect of these breezes is relatively minor when compared to the power of ocean currents. Ocean currents are caused by a number of different factors, including differences in temperature, pressure, water salinity, and topography. This results in currents such as the Gulf Stream, which brings balmy weather to North America and Western Europe, or the Humboldt Current, which makes Peru much cooler than its neighbours. But in addition to water, wind can also have large effects on climate. Prevailing winds are winds that blow predominantly in a single direction across particular points over the Earth and are caused by differences in atmospheric pressure. Their effects can be seen particularly well in the tropics, where the prevailing winds are the steering force behind tropical storms. But even after we've taken all of these things into account, and perhaps added in the Coriolis effect, urbanisation, pollution, we still can't predict weather to any degree of accuracy over long periods of time. And perhaps now is a good time to mention that weather is not climate. As the saying goes, climate is what we expect, whereas weather is what we get weather we actively experience. It can change on a daily, if not even hourly basis, whereas climate is an average of weather conditions over time and space. Ultimately, this may be due to the chaos which is inherent in the system. The response to this is a term you've probably heard of called the butterfly effect. Metaphorically, the idea can be illustrated by the formation of a tornado that was influenced by the flapping of a butterfly's wings on the other side of the world weeks earlier. In mathematical terms, the climate is a deterministic system. This means future stages can be predicted from the initial conditions alone without any randomness involved. However, small changes to the initial conditions can produce large effects in the later stages. This is not to say that the butterfly caused the tornado, but the flapping of the butterfly's wings caused a small air disturbance, which is a small change in initial conditions. This small change can, but doesn't necessarily, cascade into a much larger event, such as a tornado. So knowing what affects the climate doesn't mean we can predict what we're going to face. But you can pick the statistically most pleasing option. So where is that? Well, I can't tell you that because each of us wants something different from our holiday weather. But assuming that you don't want to freeze at the poles and you don't want to bake in a desert somewhere, how about Kiribati in the Pacific? Because it has very little temperature variation. On average, each of its months has a temperature of around 25 degrees. 